I'm at the Military Women's Memorial, located at the ceremonial gateway to Arlington National Cemetery. We are the only national memorial dedicated to telling the stories of America's service women from all eras and all military services. We do this through both our world-class collection and the register, an interactive database of military women, which houses approximately 300,000 stories of sacrifice, bravery, and service to our country. Today, we're taking a closer look at one of those stories. While this parka is standard issue, the woman who wore it was not. When Ann Coyer graduated from Officer Candidate School in Newport, Rhode Island and commissioned as an ensign in 1961, she didn't expect that she would one day make history in 1973 as the first military woman to serve in Antarctica. By the 1970s, women in the Navy were filling positions previously closed to women, construction CB and pilot, and assigned to duty stations all over the world. Since the 1950s, the United States had participated in scientific research in Antarctica. The Navy was responsible for providing support for all U.S. activities. Known as Operation Deep Freeze, this effort included shipping cargo, building stations at remote locations, transporting scientists and personnel to research sites, and supporting all their living needs. In 1973, Lieutenant Coyer joined the Naval Support Force Antarctica. In late October, she deployed to McMurdo Station for the polar summer as an administrative officer for the NSFA in one of the most inhospitable environments in the world. Prior to deploying, she was issued the standard full Antarctic survival gear, which weighed almost 50 pounds and included this parka. In a Christmas letter, Lieutenant Coyer wrote, Antarctica is a cold, forbidding place consisting of five and a half million square miles of land buried in ice and snow to elevations in excess of 14,000 feet. She wrote the temperature averaged between 10 and 20 degrees, but the wind chill factor ranged from negative 15 to negative 45 most of the time due to the high winds, which could top 40 knots. Woo! The Navy worked in the summer months to construct buildings and roads and import supplies and fuel. The airfield near McMurdo Station was built on an ice shelf. Despite the harsh conditions, McMurdo grew into a small town with a church, store, library, TV station, and a gymnasium. While 95% of the continent is covered in ice, fresh water is scarce in the world's largest desert. The water supply had to be pumped from the sea and distilled, so residents had to use water sparingly and were limited to only one shower per week. Although women had gone to Antarctica as scientists, field assistants, and reporters, the military had never assigned a woman there before. Coyer wasn't the only woman stationed there, however. Nine women scientists were there conducting research. At McMurdo, there were about 700 military and civilian personnel. Coyer managed 35 yeomen, personnel men, journalists, postal clerks, and stewards in support of Operation Deep Freeze. They worked Monday through Saturday from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. in support of science projects sponsored by the National Science Foundation. During her stay, Coyer took a trip to the very tip of the South Pole. She stayed at McMurdo until late February 1974 when she returned to the Davisville CB base on a 12,000 mile trip that crossed the equator in the International Dateline. Coyer served until 1984 and retired as a commander. As a result of her historic service, Coyer Point on the north end of an ice-covered peninsula that extends into the Dotson Ice Shelf was named in her honor in 1977. To learn more stories of women past and present who serve our nation, visit www.womensmemorial.org. Tune in for our next Her Story Spotlight.